Good morning. Shall there be weeping for those who've gone into captivity? We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 14, verses 17 and 18. Therefore you shall say this word to them, Let my eyes flow with tears night and day, and let them not cease. For the virgin daughter of my people has been broken with a mighty stroke, with a very severe blow. If I go out to the field, then behold those slain with the sword. And if I enter the city, then behold those sick from famine. Yes, both prophet and priest go about in a land they do not know. Jeremiah has a word from God. The people are to weep for the kingdom. The nation will go into Babylonian captivity. Little food will remain. Those who go out into the fields, they'll be the bodies of the slain by these invading armies. If they're in the city, they'll see people starving to death or dead in the street from famine. A more literal reading of the text when we get to the end of it from the New American Standard Bible at verse 18 is, For both prophet and priest have gone roving about in the land they do not know. Or it also says they've gone around trading in a land they do not know. Remember, the prophets and priests had set up this cozy relationship where they were both getting what they wanted out of this connection between the false prophets and the priests. And now, though, what's going to happen? They were corrupting the nation, but God refused to accept their corruption, and, and now they're getting the punishment we talked about yesterday in yesterday morning's item. God refused to accept the fake worship, and these prophets were prophesying out of, their own, out of the deceit of their own minds. And the end result is going to be alien invasion uh, as God withdraws some of his protection. God hadn't sent these prophets. They were fakes and grifters. They were prophesying out of the deceit of their own mind. They would be slain by the sword or taken into captivity. And the ones that did remain, they'd be looking for something to do. They'd fall out of their high social position and now they're just scratching to get something to live on. All this corruption in the nation would be, would be squeezed out and wrung out so that God could start again with his people. But how low the unfaithful would fall in God's judgment. But what about our situation today? Are there not multiplied voices in the churches today, just sort of bringing the people, coasting along with the world, bringing us along with the world? Whatever thing comes up in the news out there in the world, we hear about it in the church. Whatever it is, we, we always hear it echoed into the church. We're repeating its causes, copying its concerns promoting its solutions? I mean, why is the church so wrapped up in these secular causes that are not of God, that aren't, aren't put there for us to, to address? Why do the political questions of the world, why do they mean so much to us? Are we already in some kind of a cultural captivity? Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, it's a grim picture that we see here prophesied by Jeremiah. Lord, we want to be right. It seems very much it must be the case that we are ourselves already in a some kind of captivity, carried along by all these cheap winds of the cultures around us. Lord, help us to rise up higher. Help us to be Bible people. Help us to put your kingdom first, and then help us to give to know how to relate to these things. Give us wisdom so that we don't go too far one way or the other, but that we are opening door for people to come to your kingdom. Please, Lord, hear our prayer. Help your church. Bring us up higher, Lord, to higher ground, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. May God help us to look for a better understanding of the church's situation in the world today and for something fresh from him. If we are in some kind of a captivity, may he guide us to the other side into a new time when his people manifest his kingdom in this world. You're part of the kingdom right now, so go out into that world knowing it. Have a wonderful day in serving Jesus.